So, um, for those of you, just as a public service announcement, for those of you that have been having issues with links to like the textbook or slides and study guides or that kind of stuff, I I fixed some things. I fixed that there were some things that were broken and I've got them fixed. But the other thing, bizarrely enough, is if you clicking through these through Blackboard or whatever, you gotta right click and choose open in the new tab. Because if you just left click, it bizarrely enough is doing a Google search of the link within Blackboard. And that's why it ain't happening about 80% of the time. It's bizarre. I don't understand it. It's just, it, it, it has happened before and somehow I managed to fix it, but I did this problem has come back again, but I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it because, hey, Blackboard is dying in 12 short weeks, uh, 13 weeks. So, so anyway. But so if you're going to be downloading anything, if you click the link and it doesn't work, well, try right clicking the link or middle clicking it with your middle mouse button. And the links do work. This stuff does exist. Um, I have just spent the last three hours going through and cleaning things up and re verifying everything. So, just, uh, yeah. Anyway, um, determinants of supply. What determines supply is our willingness and ability to produce. What determines our willingness and ability to produce? What makes us interested in growing and selling watermelons. What makes us want to grow and sell watermelons? What, what, whatever the job is, whatever it is we want to do. Um, and we started on this list. The first is the price of the inputs, the ingredients. How much of the egg, sugar, flour, vanilla extract, and that kind of stuff that you need in order to grow a watermelon. You need to see what seeds and fertilizer and water. What's the cost for these seeds and fertilizer and water? The factor costs. The land, where's the work going to get done? The labor, who's going to do the work? The capital, those tools and equipment, and the knowledge. How much does it cost for you to get each of these? How much knowledge do you need to grow watermelons? About two percent. Not a whole lot. You just sort of you just, you stick, you stick seeds in the ground and hope and pray. Now, you may not be an efficient producer, but you get more knowledge and you learn how to do this uh, stuff for the fertilizers and sell on the ground and that kind of stuff, and you can be more successful. But it don't take a whole lot to grow watermelons. Uh, so tools and equipment. What tools and equipment do you need to grow some watermelons? Okay, a hoe, a garden hose, the ability to spit. That's pretty much it in the bag of seeds, right? Yeah. Um, are you spitting the seed? You supposed to put them in the No, you're eating the watermelon and you're spitting the seed. Oh, I'm not talking about playing playing watermelon. Yeah, I am. And so you do it the yeah, right way by that. eating a watermelon while you want to see Oh, guys, so you may buy your first watermelon. Yeah. Oh, you get your seeds. Seeds. Okay. That's what I, I thought. Okay. 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 So then the labor, how much does it cost? You only have to pay, you got to pay seven, eight, nine dollars an hour for your workers. You got to pay twelve dollars an hour, eighty-five dollars an hour because it's specialty workers. Or you. Yes, you uh, doing illegal child labor, you're only paying them a dollar a day. What do your labor cost is going to be? And then land, how much land do you need and how expensive is it to get the land, pay rent on the land, pay taxes on the land, all that kind of thing. Technology, what technology is out there and technological changes that might increase your ability to produce? Because there might be new technologies that will let you grow more watermelons, grow fat, grow watermelons faster, grow watermelons easier, grow watermelons without getting your fingers dirty, things like that. It would make more people say, "Hey, I'm maybe I'll get interested in growing watermelons." That little metaphorical box. Did I talk about the Star Trek replicator? Mm -hmm. You know where they say computer watermelons? Suddenly you don't need a whole lot of land. So uh, Connor, who lives on the eighth floor of a apartment building. He doesn't have any land, but it only needs is something a little bit space by the size of microwave in order to put this machine in, right? So he, that new technology would allow him to become a watermelon farmer, right? So that would give him the ability and willing to the ability to produce. But you got to look at other goods. What's going on with other goods? If watermelons, as price of watermelons gets higher, we get more interested in producing. We want to grow more. But watermelons are getting up to hundred dollars a piece, but cantaloupes are like two dollars a piece. Plenty of are like two dollars a piece, and whatever all every other food on the planet is like two dollars a piece. How many people are actually going to go out and buy those watermelons? Nobody. Not many. So is that going to change your mind? Yeah, watermelons are expensive, but I ain't going to waste my time planting them because nobody's going to buy them. But that market is going to go way before you start to go to harvest. Um, 
taxes and subsidies, is there any help you can get from the government? Is there any help you can get from the government as far as subsidies where they'll help give you loans, let you not have to pay taxes for a couple of years and that kind of stuff in order to encourage you to start your business? Um, or taxes, how much, what is the corporate tax rate or whatever, how much of your profit is Uncle Sam and Anthony going to take away if you are successful? Um, that can change your level of interest in it. Um, subsidies right now. Right now. If you want to start a business here somewhere in South Side, Virginia, economically speaking, we're in bad shape. Yeah, I would say pick up and go somewhere else. Not necessarily. Economically, we're in well, it depends on what you're going to do. Uh, if we had a bunch of furniture companies, a bunch of textile companies, and they must have two pairs of legs shut down, and we haven't had any jobs to come in. So we've got a lot of out of work workers. Uh, a lot of workers that were working on making decent money, working on the tobacco farms that are no longer growing as much tobacco, and now we have some more work out of work. Nothing new really has come in. So we have a lot of extra workers floating around out here. So the state government in Richmond doesn't like that. Because if we're out of work, what are we not doing? First, we're not paying taxes. And number two, we're not going to be reelecting the suckers that are in office right now. So the government doesn't like us being unemployed. So right now there's plenty of different grant programs and that kind of stuff in place that if you're pretty much, you're gonna open a business here at somewhere in South Side Virginia, and you're gonna be employing more than two or three or four people, there is going to be some kind of grants and that kind of stuff you can get from the government. Just start doing some Google searches, start doing some researching, there is grants out there, there is help to be had, help somebody start a business if you could be creating jobs. Does that make you more interested in starting a business? Maybe. I, maybe I can't afford it. You know, I barely got enough money to buy an oven or refrigerator and a delivery truck, but if I can get a few thousand dollar grant from the government, well, then I'll pay for some of that. So, hey, maybe I can do it. That explains why so many businesses come and go in Blackstone. Uh, nothing survives in Blackstone. But yes. it sounds like the retail stores, but the retail stores, drug dealers. We also don't have a, a very large workforce that those companies actually want. And yeah, we talked, um, did we talk about that the other day? But that, that's, I'm getting my classes blending together. Is that teaching you resources classes? That's what you but part of the thing coming back to labor is not only how much do you have to pay them, but how many of them out there, how many are there out there that you can hire? Um, Microsoft, they came in, they got these subsidies from the state government to come in and put the data center in Boydton. Little itty bitty Boydton. There ain't much going on in Boydton. It is bigger than others. That's about all you can say. Um, so they got subsidies, so they're like getting cheap electricity, they're not having to pay property tax, they're getting all, all these little loopholes and this kind of stuff, stuff going on. Highways being cleaned up, fixed up, and improved to make it better for Microsoft. Because of the hope Microsoft's going to end up hiring a bunch of workers. Well, Microsoft, they're continuing to expand because they're getting a good deal here, but the problem is they're looking around and like, well, when this new phase of construction is going to come online here in the next few months, we need like 30 or 40 more network engineers, and they're looking around and what are they not finding? Network engineers. Just network engineers. engineers. So what are they ending up doing? They're ending up having to bring people in. This is, they're employing some construction workers to be working on building the buildings and expanding. They're employing a few social security guards, janitorial staff, that kind of stuff, but the bulk of the high-tech, good-paying jobs are being, those people are being brought in. If you want a job, stop majoring in what you're majoring in and switch to IT and then go over there in a couple of years' time. Actually, I know where you can get a fiber certification and go get a job in a couple of weeks. That's what I used to do. Before I went back to school, a what kind of certification? A fiber certification, okay. fiber optic certification. That's what they want you to have out there. Yeah. And that, and you know, just networking in general, and then security to, to be doing the. This word is escaping me, but be monitoring the network, make sure there ain't no intrusions and stuff going on there. We've had several of our graduates have gone there. We've got several of the people that worked in our network services. They're there for a couple of years, then they end up at Microsoft. Um, 
but we were there on it. There's a bunch of us faculty and staff people, administrators went on a tour of the place two, three years ago, and we're sitting, we're there with the head of the place, and we're sitting there, and like I say, our dean, a couple of the deans are in there, and this kind of stuff, one of the computer teachers is sitting there talking, well, I got this certification, this certification, this certification, and the dude, right there in front of everybody, looked her in the eye and said, you want a job? And he won't joke in. They're looking for people. Because how many do you think, if you've been, you know, Microsoft is based in Redmond, Washington, which is outskirts of Seattle, Washington, where they've got coffee, I think legalized marijuana, and things like that. And how many of those people want to move out here? They would love to be hiring people here. That's part of what we're doing here. That's why we opened up the computer lab, the, the new computer whatever that thing is, I so the, data data. Data. the data center testing thing in South Hill, the whole whatever, I, I had the name of it just in my brain a couple of days ago, but just, I mean, we're, we're trying to do stuff to be great people, not just for Microsoft, but you know, talk together that statistics. Expectations, what do you think is gonna happen in the future? If you think, yeah, I can start growing watermelons, but I think everybody else in the county is going to start growing watermelons too, then I ain't going to have anybody sell them to you. Should I bother? If you think news is going to come out tomorrow saying that eating watermelons makes people faster, stronger, better looking, and smells better, everybody's going to be wanting watermelons, so it would be nice to get on the ground floor of that. You know, so, what do you expect is going to happen in the future? If you think the economy is about to collapse, maybe you don't want to. If you think the alien overlords are going to come back and conquer humanity, Yes, I said come back. If they could come back and conquer humanity next week, are you going to bother planting watermelons now? They're not going to be ready for harvest for another five months? No. Right. So what do you, yeah, what do you think is going to be happening in the future? Is going to be coloring your decisions? Or you know, am I really going to mess with planting watermelons? Am I really going to mess with open a bakery or whatever the job happens to be? And then while well, I kind of hinted it at the number of sellers, how many other people are you going to be competing against? Is that number getting bigger or getting smaller? So these are the things that are going to determine, am I interested in growing watermelons? Am I able to grow watermelons? Am I willing to grow watermelons? And then the price is going to determine, now that you're interested, and now that you've looked at this, how many are you going to actually plant? Price is not here. The price of watermelons is not on here. The price to produce watermelons is part of it, but the price of watermelons is not here. Just like the price of... <coughs> Watermelons wasn't on that list of determinants of demand. You're interested in them, you have money, you like the flavor, and then the price is just gonna dictate, now that you're interested, how many watermelons are you gonna buy? In this case, the price is gonna dictate, how many am I gonna grow? If watermelons are selling for $5 a piece, yeah, you might plant a few seeds in the backyard. If watermelons are selling for $100 a piece, you plant seeds in the backyard, the front yard, the neighbor's yard, you're throwing dirt up on the garage roof, and pitches the seeds up there, hoping to at least one more grow. Right? Yeah, you were already interested by just the price is the, the dictating how far you're willing to go. You with me? So this sort of parallels what we saw with the demand shifting thing. If the price changes, you're just moving to a different spot on the same supply curve. If anything other than the price changes, you get a whole new supply curve. New technology makes it easier to grow watermelons. More people are going to grow watermelons. And guess what? So we, if something comes out like the minimum wage law, you go, ooh, was that in this class? We about the minimum wage. Somebody Googled it. The other side of the No, I meant like last week. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, maybe somebody in my hearing or something. Yeah, I think it was class. finance. Yeah, uh, fine, okay. The, he, he saw something about the minimum wage of Virginia being bumped to 1010, but it's not. It's right, somebody proposed that analysis. So, <laughs> if they raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour, is that going to slow you down on growing watermelons? Yeah, because yeah, i got to pay my workers a whole lot more. So, and then, unless you don't have so I'm not going to hire as many workers unless you don't have workers. But if you got to pay your workers more, that's going to slow down your ability to produce your willingness to produce because. You know, hey, bad enough I gotta pay these suckers seven dollars an hour, but now I gotta pay fifteen. I don't think so. It's bad enough I had to pay two dollars a gallon for my delivery truck for the gas for my delivery truck, but now I gotta pay four dollars a gallon all these things for market. That'll slow you down a little bit. So
Visually speaking, if it is good news for the producer, if it makes it easier to produce, <coughs> supply is going to shift out of the right. New technology means with the same land, I can grow more. Uh, cheaper wages means with the same land, I can get more people working. I can get more work done for the same amount of money. Right. Uh, land getting cheaper, well then that means I can afford to buy more land. It's easier for me to buy more land to grow more water. So if it's good news, the supply is going to shift out to the right. Or if it's bad news, supply is going to come back to the left. If it makes it harder for me to do my job, I'm not going to be able to do as much. Right. So if i got to give more money to Uncle Sam and Aunt Virginia, I'm going to have less profit in my pocket. That takes the fun out of it. If i got to pay my workers more, then that's less money in my pocket. It takes the fun out of it. If the cost of land and tractors and bullets are all going up, it takes the fun out of it. It's taking money out of my pocket. So, but if the price is the thing that changed, all you're doing is going from, well, when watermelons are selling $2 a piece, I was just planting a few in the, water, in the backyard, watermelons are selling $30 a piece, I'm going to grow more. The price changes, you're moving on a different spot on this line because that's what this graph is showing you, is how many you would grow in each different line. Anything other than the price changes, you get that whole new supply curve. Go with it. Just like we saw with the AUS Thursday. So, somewhere along the line, supply and demand have to meet. You got that, you know, why are you growing it if they ain't going to buy it? And we ain't buying it if they ain't growing it, right? Somewhere along the line, the two has to meet. And if you really think about it, in both cases, when you graph the supply curve and we graph the demand curve, we had price on the y-axis, we had quantity on the x-axis. So what we do is we reach equilibrium. When have you ever seen the word equilibrium besides an economics class? Have you ever heard that word? Science yeah. class. And you were talking about what? Balance. Balance. Your inner ear, you get dizzy, you fall over, whatever. Balance. So think balance, equilibrium, equilibrium, equal, right? So that's where we're going here. The equilibrium is the price where the amount that they make is equal to the amount that we buy. Because is it good business for you to be growing watermelons that you know you can't sell? That's the wasted, thing, right? Is, well, is it good business to grow more watermelons than you can sell? Was that the same example I just used? Yes. Do you can say that again? Uh, is it good business to grow knowing you the number of watermelons you could sell? You could sell 100 of them, you only grow five. Well, you're missing out on a whole bunch of opportunity. You got a whole bunch of people, angry people banging on the door saying, Give me watermelon or give me death. Right? That's not good. So, ultimately, the goal here for a company or for society as a whole is to get to this where the amount that we're making. Supply is equal to the amount that the customers are buying. And that you get right here. At this price here, what if I think I have a numerical example in my play? At this price, I'm going to make up a number. At $3 a piece, we, the customers, are willing to eat 80 watermelons. At $3 a piece, they, the watermelon farmers, are willing to grow. 80 watermelons. So we don't have any leftover wasted watermelons that's going to get thrown away. We don't have a bunch of people showing up saying, I'd love me a watermelon and banging the shelves are empty. Right. If the price is up here, you and I don't want to buy as much because they're more expensive. But at the price of $5 a piece, the farmers are like, dude, if I can get $5 a piece, they want to grow a bunch. So what do we have? Surplus. Leftovers, surplus. Where if the price is down here somewhere, $2 a piece, you've got not many people willing to grow watermelons, but $2 a piece, as much people want watermelons. So generally speaking, if I'm growing too many watermelons, well, let me switch the watermelons to like baking cakes or cookies or something. You're okay with this one. Which cookies? Hey. Cookie. Cookie. Okay. Uh, if we're baking cookies, um, if we find today we baked so many cookies we couldn't sell them and then the next day we got a new one. 
Mark them down. And then if we still can't sell them the day after that, we've got to throw them away. Give them to the homeless. Or give them to the homeless. But we're still not making any profit, and we're giving it away, we're throwing it away, we're getting rid of it, we're not making money for it. If I make too many cookies today, if I make more cookies than I can sell today, what am I going to do tomorrow? Make, less. make fewer cookies. And then if I still bang too many tomorrow, then what am I going to do the day after that? Make, less. make even fewer until I get to that point where the amount of cookies that I make in the day is going to be equal to the amount of cookies that I can sell after that. Flip side is if I made my cookies and I'm sold out by 10 o'clock in the morning, go make more. That's how businesses go uh, out of business. Yeah, slowly, which slowly decline. What ends up happening is if you, either way, it's a problem. You're either wasting ingredients, electricity, baking cake, baking cookies that you can't sell or you're missing out on opportunities to sell more cookies or to sell the same number of cookies at a higher price. So either way, you're not making as much money as you could. And why, why are we in business? To make as much money as we can. Price, profit, that's our goal here. So we're gonna automatically adjust. And I'm gonna get to that in a slightly later slide. All by myself, I built the Hayden chips. Friday, trying to beat the ice storm. I've like, got my like carpal tunnel or something, and I'm like, I can't type it. I'm not going to type it for a little bit. I'm not going to type it But a surplus is when the amount that they're making is greater than the amount that we're wanting to buy. You made too much. Why did you end up making too much? Generally, because you thought you'd be able to sell them at a higher price than you could. You thought, yeah, I can sell these cookies for $3 a piece at $3 a piece. Yeah, I want to make a whole bunch of them. I can afford to make a whole bunch of them. But it turns out you can sell them. Anyway. So, you, you generally speaking, you, the way you get a surplus is the price that you're charging is higher than it should be. So you don't end up selling as much as you end up trying to produce. This is what Apple is dealing with with their iPhones at the moment. And what is Apple doing with their iPhones? They are reducing production. But, and they're expecting their sales to be like 11, 12% less next quarter than this quarter. Just the, the first time in like nine years Apple had a down quarter. Many more people uh, were not going to do well this time around. Apple is no longer a trillion dollar company. How long do they really expect or something to keep climbing? Yes. 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 Unrealistic. Yes. All the way technology is advanced. It just seems like every year something new is coming out and people are going to flock to it every single time. Yes and no. Let's start with phones. There's now five phones for every man, woman, and child on the face of the earth. How many more do you think are going to go into the public market? It depends. But I mean, but but the, the, the technological advance. How much more advanced is this phone than one thirty years ago? This is Pixel Three. I had a Pixel. My son has a Pixel now. The camera and, quality. Okay, the camera quality is a little bit better. It's, I mean, it's better. It's a little bit faster. And what? The processor is a lot faster. Okay, it's a little bit faster, so you can play a slightly more complex game. It's not like the advances from the first, second, third generation phones. The advances were in leaps and bounds. But nowadays, okay, it's a little bit faster, a little bit better battery life, a little bit more pixels on your pictures. That's where we've gone to. So we really haven't improved on it. There hasn't been a wow thing going on with cell phones for years. The technological advances are going on in other fields of technology. And Apple, here's the what new product have they come out with in the last few years? Actually, there's a Verizon exclusive phone right now. Um, I think it's literally called like Red. I don't, but like the, the screen's in 3D. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh um, yeah, I heard right. Uh, yeah. If, if that's what I'm thinking, yeah, just to stay away from it. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, so, if, if it's a phone I'm thinking of, just, just say no, move on. Probably, um, but that's still pretty crazy. Yes. But 
the, the te technology, the, you know, okay, the phones have matured because, like Dave was saying, everybody, everybody except for my mother and my father, everybody else has got a smartphone, right? And Dr. Dalton, our dean. <laughs> They're like the only three people that I know that don't have a smartphone anymore. And they're not getting any better. So what's happened is it used to be back in the day, yeah, when you're when you when your two year upgrade cycle came, yeah, you were running to the door to get another phone because oh my, if I was bringing my original ATC or whatever, just enjoy the job. Yeah, uh, yeah. It just the 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 the, the no, I mean, just. But now, you, know, you do just fine with the phones two, three, four years old. So people aren't upgrading every couple of years, that kind of stuff. People aren't willing to pay the thousand dollars or what such for phones. So phone sales are selling for Apple. So in Apple's case, they got to do what? Well, what's the next thing? To bring what out one of the ninety thousand patents they got in the vault. Yeah, well, they can become a patent troll and just sue everybody. That's what the, no, I'm saying they they buy up patents. Yeah. And, all the time. Yeah, you know, and that's wrong. They could be a patent troll with it. Take these, they buy these patents, and they're going to turn around and sue people for violating their patents. That is a patent troll. Uh, and we should do it. We're just break one out and make it. It's been sitting there gathering dust. But that, and, and that's to a certain extent, now Steve Jobs isn't here anymore. The the visionary of Apple isn't there anymore. And it's like, what have they done? Which even before Jobs died, we got an iPad. What's the iPad? It's a big phone. And what's it doing? How many of y'all have an iPad? Okay, uh, have, how many of you use this? No hands went up. Some of you got them, none of you use them, so guess what? Nobody's buying them anymore, right? The school systems aren't buying them anymore because they still were, you know, $500 worth, so what? Going to be $200 Chromebooks. Okay, so, okay, the Apple Watch, how many of you got one? Two of you. I'm sorry. Did you have the iWatch 3, the, the latest one? Okay, yeah, you, you just, okay. So, just, just, Okay, so we're not going to talk about a couple AirPods. of uh, We're not going to talk about AirPods. Oh, yeah. The wireless headphones. Yes. Yeah, like yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. AirPods. Oh, yeah. The HomePod giant speaker. Just, they, 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 they need the next thing to carry it through because what's happening is the phones going back. Ooh, ooh, okay, here we go. Got another client fancy talking about Apple. It actually works. What's happening? The technology now is getting to the point where there's, it's easier and easier for more companies to build smartphones now. My next smartphone is not going to be an Apple. It's not going to be a Google. It's certainly not going to be Samsung. It's going to be probably a OnePlus. That's going to be my next one. Have y'all heard of them before? Yeah. Okay, a couple of you just, I mean, and th there's a bunch of other phone companies out there and they're doing some neat, interesting things and stuff, but then just Samsung and Apple like plodding along as the technology is getting cheaper. The chips are getting cheaper because it ain't very cheap if we're making them two or three or four at a time, but we can make it pretty cheap if we're making two or three, four million of them at a time. The parts are getting cheaper, the screens are getting cheaper and better and that kind of stuff. You can get a pretty darn, you get a $200 Motorola phone now for $200. And it's as good as a six or seven hundred dollar phone three years ago. Okay, so what's happening? Okay, it's gonna be harder and harder and harder for you to justify charging a thousand dollars or eight hundred dollars for a cell phone when people get some pretty darn good hardware for like six or three. Two. And they're not waterproof. And they're not waterproof. That's why you get a lot of the case. Um, yeah, and then you end up with phones the size of a deck of cards. What's the point in going slim? What's the point? Anyway, I just dabble. Anyway, um, but anyway, but that, that's the nature of competition and technology. The thing is going to mature, so you got to be more looking for well, what's the next thing that we're doing. So, Apple, if you've been paid hey, to them, I'll just shut up about them and then just their last earnings call the usual services. They're talking about. The, the future for them is services. The they're providing the app store. And they get thirty percent off of every app that gets sold, every in-app purchase. For those of you that are getting what well, you can't now, but if you're paying for your Netflix subscription through Apple Pay or whatever, Apple's getting thirty percent of it. Netflix said, uh, "Screw that." Netflix, uh, like a couple of weeks ago, was like, "You can't do that anymore because they don't want to give up thirty percent to Apple just for them and enabling you to click a mouse." What's the future of Apple? You can low price stock. Stock market awesome. Hmm? 
low, lower price stocks, which is going to be great. They're highly inflated. Yes, uh, that's the their stock price coming in. They're probably their prices. If I'm but they're like it's, but they, they want to be premium, be the aspirational brand. So that's getting in marketing, which we'll talk about next month. In my marketing class, so I know you guys want. So um, surplus, yeah, you try to charge too high a price, and you end up with leftovers, and that's not good for business. Uh, surplus for you visual learners, I just sort of drew this a few minutes ago accidentally. That's to be where the price is higher than it should be, and so you end up with a situation that customers don't want to buy as much, but you want to make a lot. And here's the problem for a lot of things you make it, you got to make it before they can buy it, right? The farmer in February or March has to be guessing what they think the price is going to be, what they think the sales are going to be for October when the crop, crop is going to come due. You know, the auto manufacturers, they got to be setting up how many production lines they need in order to crank up how many cars they need in order to have them there. Months in advance, years in advance. So they think demand is going to be out there, and they think if demand is out there, then this is the price that we can charge, this is how much we'll sell those plants, so this is how much we're going to make. But if it turned out, well, demand ain't out there because the price is high and demand actually is so, that's why you have to do market research. You got to do your homework so you don't mess up. But you end up with a surplus, the price ended up being too high, and the customers ended up not as willing to buy it as you thought they would. So do you your market research. So a shortage is when the amount that we want to buy is greater than the amount that they make. They sell out early and people are banging on the door, give me watermelon, give me death, give me cookie, give me death. That's what Patrick Henry was representing. Well, I, Patrick Henry was saying, give me liberty or give me your death. Y'all history majors. Patrick Henry, no center what, Randolph Henry, well, I mean, whoops. <coughs> Henry Henry did, where I come from. Yeah, we get it. We just. It wasn't that funny. The late person said you could talk about Okay. Just, I thought it was funny. Yes, it certainly didn't show. <laughs> so, um, if the price is too low, we're going to sell out. So, what do you do? Okay, we know if you bake a bunch of cookies and you got a bunch of left over at the end of the day, what are you going to do tomorrow? Are you going to make, make you're going to make your cookies? And probably the other thing you're going to do is lower your price because you got to sell out those day old ones too, right? But in this case, well, what are you going to do if it's 10 o'clock in the morning, you've sold out and you cannot physically make any more cookies. You raise price. Watermelons have come in for harvest. There ain't going to be any more watermelons until next spring. And so you've got a box full of watermelons, you've got a line a mile long outside your door waiting to buy it. So what are you going to ask? How bad do you want it? You ain't going to sell on watermelons for two or three dollars a piece knowing that there's people out there waiting in that line to roll and pay five or eight or twelve or fifteen or whatever to roll and pay. So if the price is too low, you're going to end up with a shortage. And if the price is too low, what are you going to end up doing? You can raise your price. And you're going to try to grow more or bake more. If your price is too high, you're going to try to make less and lower your price. So it happens automatically, which is a hint, hint, wink, wink. To, I think it's going to be the next slide. But visually speaking, the price is below what it should be. So the amount that we're making is a whole lot less than the amount that we're buying. So you have that shortage. But here's the thing, for you history majors, any, anybody history? Any history majors? How about the change of history? You change to history or the history? Well, to history. Well, if you want to get into like a good college like Virginia Tech or something like that, and you want to get into like I don't know, the engineering program or something like that, then you picky, go in as a history major. That way you get into university and then you transfer, switch majors. It's a whole lot easier than trying to apply as an engineer in the first place. So, if the price is too high, we're going to lower our price. If the price is too low, we're going to raise our price. We already talked about it. We already figured that out. If we're baking too much, 
We're going to cut down how much we're baking. If we didn't bake enough, we're going to bake more. We already figured that out all on our own here in this class. The customers and the producers are going to adjust their behavior automatically. They don't need the government telling people what to do. They don't need the government saying, uh, y'all are baking too many cookies, y'all need to slow down. Or uh, y'all are charging too much in cookies, y'all need to lower your price. This is gonna happen automatically so the market moves as if moved by an invisible hand, quote unquote. That's a quote from the dude named Adam Smith. Do y'all remember him from the industry class? Father Reed Elvis. Well, yeah, I mean, you could sort of call him that, but yes. Um, I mean, I guess some people do. But, uh, but yeah, he, he's Adam Smith. He wrote a book called The Wealth of Nations. He's talking about the invisible hand. The economy's gonna work it out on its own. We don't need the government telling us what to do and how to do. And when did Adam Smith print or publish The Wealth of Nations? 1776. What was happening in 1776? The American Revolution, where we're standing at the borders, middle fingers in the air, pointed toward England saying, we don't need you telling us what to do. This is the economic underpinning of the American Revolution here. Get out of our business. No taxation without representation. No quartering your soldiers in our houses. Don't be telling us who we can sell to, how much we can charge, how much we gotta make. Because it's gonna work itself out just fine on its own. Liberty and freedom, and it'll work out on its own. We may have a little bit of speed bumps moving out as we get things worked out, but first few days, you may make too many cookies to slow down, and still might be too much to slow down, and still might be too much, but you'll get there. Oh, cross curriculum thing going there. Stay yeah, with me? Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna sort of speed up, but if y'all need me to slow down, let me know. Let me all speed up crap, you don't wake that bird. So you have supply and you have demand, and they're happening at the same time. You have producers, you have customers. So what happens when stuff happens? If the determinants of demand changes, the determinants of supply changes. If something happens, what happens in the economy? I guess we're trying to stick with cookies. See if I can work this example through. What happens if you open the newspaper tomorrow? Okay, y'all don't read the newspaper, right? You go online on the internet tomorrow and you find the news, you're checking the news websites, and the news websites are saying, uh, new study shows that eating cookies makes you stronger, smarter, faster, better looking. So, question one Is that a demand thing or supply thing? Demand. That's a demand thing. Because that changes the way we think about cookies, right? Changes the way we feel about cookies. What are we thinking? I want to eat more cookies. Cookies. Right. Sorry. Uh, that, but does it change the baker's ability to produce cookies? No. Because they still have the ovens that they have. They still have the refrigerators they have. They still have their child laborers that they have. Right? The ability to produce cookies has not changed. So it's not a supply issue. It's a demand issue. And is cookies mean making you faster, better, stronger? What is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's a good thing. So what are we going to get? Demand is going to increase. What happens when demand increases? When demand increases, this demand is no more. That's the old reality. We have the new reality where cookies make you faster, better, and stronger. So we want, no matter what the price is, Cookies are expensive, we're gonna eat more cookies than we did before. If cookies are cheap, we're gonna eat more cookies than we did before. No matter what the price is, we're more willing to eat cookies now than we were before. So the result we get is what? Obesity. <laughs> we get obese, yes, maybe, possible. Well, it depends on how many cookies you have to eat. How, how many cookies do you have to eat to make yourself the smarter, better, faster looking, whatever? Yeah, just that they're wrong. Yeah. But it's like, well, it, part of it depends on just how mentally slow you are. If you're as slow as I am, you need a cookie ID, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Well, it makes sense. Um, I hate you all so much. It's a like cookie dough. It's like, yeah, yeah, just give me a tube of cookie dough and <laughs> instead of Kansas, I drop my drink and cookie dough. 
<laughs> I'm just thinking, I'm sure it's a shake made with cookie dough and sun drop. It's just blended with you know, those yeah, kind of yeah. It's the right kind of cookie. Anyway, but what happens? Price. Well, what's that? More people are going to want cookies today than even yesterday, right? The bakeries can open the doors and the lines outside the doors will be longer today than it was yesterday. So what are they going to do? What's the baker going to do? Oh crap, I'm going to pay more cookies because I can sell more cookies, but you know, I can't be buying a whole bunch more ovens and hire more people and that kind of stuff. So one of the other things I'm going to do is, okay, y'all want them more, let's see, and Late the prices are going to go up. I know that there's more people wanting my product, so I'm going to charge a higher price. See what happens. So the price will go up, quantity will go up. Because if the price is going up and more people are interested in cookies, what happens if you don't great you don't make any more cookies? Somebody, yeah, somebody else is going to somebody it. else is going to do it. So no matter what, most of the time you have to increase production and raise price at the same time. Yeah. But well, well, decrease at the same time. Well, if, if it's a demand increase. If it's demand is increasing, this is your recipe. Because this is going to happen. Because if the line is longer outside your store, and there is somebody across the street that's sitting there looking and seeing you closing the door, flipping the sign over, saying, sorry, we're running out of cookies at 10 a.m. or that kind of stuff. Somebody across the street will be sitting there saying, that's an opportunity. So if you don't make the extra cookies to satisfy this extra demand, somebody else is going to do it. So if the demand is increasing, you need to be able to step up your game. You take advantage of that increase and not just get more dollars for each cookie that you're making, but sell more cook, make more cookies at the same time so you get a whole lot more money and you're preventing the threat of competition. Because what happens if competition comes in and you know you, you went from a cookie store in town to two cookie stores in town? Yeah, maybe this happened, but then suddenly there's two cookie stores in town and you just lost half of your customers. You're getting a little bit higher price for the cookies you're selling, but you're now selling only about half of what you were selling before. You've got to protect what you're doing. So you'll have to increase how much you're producing in this case. Well, it if you already have competition. Well, it's just going to continue. You can either there's more cookies that are wanted. You can either provide them, or you can let them provide it and take that money for themselves. Remember when we were talking about other producers? That's what I'm talking about. So if demand increases, the price will go up, and the quantity will go up. If they'll make more cookies, we'll buy more cookies, and that's okay because we want more cookies. And we're okay with paying a little bit higher price because a cookie will do more for me now than it did before. Instead of a cookie just being fantastically delicious, it's fantastically delicious and it makes me smarter and better looking and faster. All right. So you're willing to pay more for something that will do more. And that's what you're hoping for while you're going to be going to college so they're going to pay you more than they would have when you first graduated high school to be you more, right? It's the same thing. You expect your lawyers to pay more for your college degree, well, because you can do more, well, same thing, you expect to pay more for a cookie if it can do more. Apple thinks you should be okay to pay a thousand dollars for an iPhone because it can do more than, than last year's model. Anyway, yes, I have a bit of an Apple hater in case you had noticed. Are you a Samsung hater too? Pretty much. He's a Linux guy, so he hates everything made by the popular establishment. Uh, no. Yeah, well, we also like Slender Rock too, so. Yeah, yeah. It's refreshing, delicious. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Oh, it's a big I'm sorry to tell you. I'm sorry to tell you that sort of disgusting. Uh, I'm sorry you feel that way. Well, that's right. <laughs> I mean, we see it every time. You know what else is disgusting? You smell so great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. But, uh, but this is a Google Pixel, so I mean, I'm not a. It's, Does it have a good camera? Yes. But I mean, so, you know, in Google, and, you know, I'm driving the Jeep. I'm not driving some kind of weird car that's made Yugoslavia and the Yugo that y'all don't remember because they long before y'all were born. But, um, I'm not a weirdo. We just, I, I want things to do what I want them to do, and I don't want them to be crashing and pushing a bunch of crap updates every time you turn around. And, and yeah, that's true. Yeah, so. and, and I want freedom to be able to do things under the hood that Apple won't let you do. But anyway, I digress. So. Alternate universe. Um, 
you open up the web browser and you read the newspaper article, this is an alternate universe here, um, for another day, and you see that a new report comes out saying eating cookies causes lip cancer. Is that a supply thing or a demand thing? That's going to be a demand thing. Because it doesn't change their cost of flour, it doesn't change how many ovens and refrigerators they have, but it does change the way we feel about eating cookies. It's going to hit our determinants because we prefer not to eat things that are going to make our lips fall off, right? So, in that case, what's going to happen? Demand is going to decrease. It's going to shift back to the left because that's bad news. So, what's going to happen? We can eat less cookies, right? And so, to try to stop the bleeding, to try to stop how many customers are going to lose, they're going to lower the price. So it's like, yeah, we know they're going to rip your lips off, but hey, you know, you get it for a quarter piece. Right? So they're going to try to lower prices to stop the metaphorical bleeding there to keep people from going completely away. Prices will go down. They will make less. We will buy less if we can reach that new equilibrium. Right? So it's bad news for demand. Sales goes down and price goes down. As a company, it doesn't get much worse than this. Right? You're losing customers and you got to give bigger discounts to the customers that you what few customers you have left. This is ugly, but nobody wants what you got anymore. Right? This is ugly when all the girls in the high school say, no, 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 nobody did him ever. That's when it gets ugly. Right. What do you think that happened to you? I'm suspicious that happened to me, but anyway, it's just now it couldn't happen to me because nobody did it in the first place. So the joys of being invisible in high school. I could walk the halls, I could do whatever I could steal, whatever. So nobody did it. Rob the bank. No. Uh, so. Alternate universe number three. You open the news. You watch the news. And you see that the price of eggs goes down. We're talking cookies here. The price of eggs goes down. Does that change the way you feel about cookies? No. No. Because no. how many of you knew whether eggs were used in making cookies or not? Half of you didn't even know that, right? Mm -hmm. So eggs getting cheaper doesn't change the way we feel about cookies. So it ain't a demand thing, but eggs getting cheaper, does that impact their ability to make cookies? Yes. Does it make it easier for them to make cookies? Sure. Yes. So in this case, eggs getting cheaper will increase their ability to make cookies. So for the same amount of money, they can afford to make more cookies. So what will end up happening? We will make more cookies. And this can sound weird. Use that as an opportunity to lower our price. We're basically making the same thing. And you don't have any WTF moment for that? No. I mean, it's got benefits. It also has drawbacks. Yeah. It's a yeah. fine, fine line okay. to toe. I, I, I said an opportunity to lower your price. You want to do that to prevent competition from coming in. Because if the price of your cookies is high, it's expensive, and somebody else, a game of limbo, and somebody else says, I think I can go under that bar, well, guess what? You just lost half your customer. We also acquire a, 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 a whole bunch of customers we didn't have in the first place. Yeah. Maybe you can end up stealing customers from somebody else. Maybe cookies are cheaper. Well, maybe even if you're the only cookie game in town, your cookies being cheaper, people get stop eating as many brownies, don't buy more cookies. Stop eating cake and buy cookies. Stop eating watermelons, buy more cookies because cookies are cheaper. You want to do that to protect your spot in the market. So if it's easier to bake cookies, it's easier for you to bake cookies, it's easier for somebody else to bake cookies, so you want to lower your price to keep it, somebody else from being able to get into the game and steal your customers away from you. So I was, it sounded weird, but sure, it's opportunity for you to lower your price. And that is what businesses look for, an opportunity to lower their price, but guess what, it's okay. We're getting a little bit less for our cookies, how many cookies? How many more cookies are we selling? Not a lot. Hopefully, the way it works out is we'll end up bringing home the same or more money by doing this. Because when we lower the price, we get to sell more cookies, and so we sell a bunch of them. 
for a little price as opposed to selling a few of them at a higher price. So you will take this opportunity, take the market, work at angle, make as much money as you can here. So I thought you were going to get Christmas. And guess what? If the, the supply increases and you say, no, I'm going to leave the price the same, it's always been this way and that's the way I'm always going to do it, somebody else is going to come along and steal those customers away from you. So the price for cookies in the market is going to go down. Either you're going to lower your price or somebody else is going to lower their price and steal your price. The price will go down and more cookies will get bought. As a customer, this is our favorite. Well, let me put an asterisk there. Economically speaking, as a customer, this is our favorite. We can get more cookies, they're less likely to run out, and I don't have to pay as much. Woohoo! That's like, if I can get any store I can go into now, I can start buying the sun drops you're selling for $1.99 a 12-pack. Happy boy, right? Now, I said, economically speaking, this is the best. But maybe, for society speaking, the increase in demand might be the best because... It depends on what the benefit is, you know, it's smarter, better, faster, smarter, better smelling, whatever, all of that stuff. Yeah, that really might be better than saving a couple of bucks. But economically, that one was the best. So, alter alternative number four is you open a newspaper and you see an article saying that... Yes. The price of, okay, we'll just go with that. The price of eggs has tripled in cost. And that changed the way we feel about cookies. So this is a supply thing, and it makes it harder for the business to do business because we've got to pay a whole bunch more for them eggs that we're going to be putting into our cookies. So if it's going to cost us more for our ingredients, we're going to pass that cost on to our customer, right? And what happens when we pass an additional cost to our customer raising our price? We aren't going to sell as much. Those are the alternative outcomes you get from the various different pieces of news that you can get. Are you all with me on these? So when it comes time to on the test, when we do this, I'll give you a blank supply and a demand curve, and you can sit there and draw lines and play with it, which is what I have to do because I can't memorize things. You can, if you're really bored, just gang memorize this slide and then you can use it to answer your questions. Or you can just sort of logically logic it out like we kind of talked about, about when you got your cost of eggs has gone up, are you going to pass that cost on to the customer so you can raise your price and then you can end up selling one. So you can logically figure it out, you can play with supply and the demand curve to figure it out, or you can gang memorize this. Which is saying something good happens to demand. We're going to be eating more, or we're going to be paying more. If something bad happens to the man, we're going to eat less, but they're going to charge less. If something good happens for supply, well, we're going to eat more, and price goes down. If something bad happens to supply, we're going to eat less, and the price is going to be higher. So if you can gain memorize it, whatever works for you. And if you need help reconstructing this, on the top of your page on the test, if it's demand that's moving, they both move in the same direction. If it's supply moving, they're moving in opposite directions. And then if it's if whatever it is is going up, you can have a quantity increase. If whatever it is is going down, you can have a quantity decrease. So if you memorize those two rules, then those two rules can help you reconstruct this chart. Now you just got a fourth way to answer those questions. Right? Just look at me like I'm crazy. Yeah, man. Don't answer that thing. Okay. I'm not going to make you do supply and demand curves on the test. They will be the, well. There will be a set of supply and demand curves that I'm going to give you an equilibrium thing, and I'm going to. I'm going to give you this, and I'm going to have you, you know, how many cookies, you know, there'll be numbers here, and like, how many cookies should they sell, and what price should they sell them for, well, what happens if they try to sell them at this price, you know, this is how much you can sell, this is how much you can make, there will be a question like that on the test, there is a question like that on the homework, I think the homework is available in Blackboard for you to do now. Yeah, I have a question. Yes. Well, didn't you say we were supposed to do that? Yes. All right. Uh, it's not due. I, I'm not worried about it until coming up on the exam. 
Oh, okay. All right. So, so yeah, I saw like a different date on it because I did this morning. I honestly can't remember when the date but it was. It was like I, February something. Though. Okay. I think I just ran. May, may, I was aiming for it being due around the time of the test. Okay. If you need to do it before the test, then he can help you after the test because the test will be done. All right. So, do it before the test. So, the world is a complex place. Success with absolute fun of it. What happens if a supply increase and a demand increase? Oh, I need to change my font. Sorry. Uh, a supply increase and a demand increase happens at the same time. Eggs get cheaper at the same time that eating cookies makes you better, faster, stronger, and better looking. Balance each other out. Yes and no. Well, it depends on what rate each one increases. What happens is. Cheaper eggs, they can make more cookies. More cookies are going to get made. Eggs are cookies making us better looking. We're going to eat more cookies. Both cases are way making us want to buy and eat more cookies, making them want to make more cookies. Both of them are leading toward more cookies. So you're going to get a bunch more cookies. But the problem is, is one of them is trying to increase the price. Where, you know, because, you know, these cookies do more for you, so we're going to raise the price on. But the other one is trying to push the price down because it's cheaper to prevent competition. So we don't really know what's going to happen to the price. It, it depends. Just if they make you, if the cost of eggs triple, but the cookies only make you one one thousandth of a percent smarter. Okay, then what's going to happen? The price is going to go up. But if the price of eggs went up by one penny a ton, and the things make you a super genius just by licking a cookie, then the price could be going down. All right. Girl. So it's just dependent on the variables of the situation. Yeah. It depends on how much the supply increases, how much the demand increases. So we can't really speak about the price. Because one of them's pushing it up, one of them's pushing it down, so you don't really know. This is going to be who else besides Kirby Carey has a, um, a pickup truck? Okay, who can I pick on? Oh, I don't, I don't know which Matthew. car, truck, and SUV. Matthew. So, Matthew right. and Carrie take your trucks, go out to the parking lot, and you ease them up in your bumper to bumper. What kind of truck? What kind of truck? What kind of truck? Do you want to see? A, we're going to get a, you got a four. Okay. And, but, you know, they go bumper to bumper, and it's like, okay, on the count of three, mash the gas and see what happens. Carrie's truck's trying to go this way. Matthew's truck's trying to go that way. So there's a whole lot of tires spinning, a whole lot of blue smoke in the air, and there ain't a whole lot of movement there, right? But eventually there's going to be a little bit of movement one way or the other, right? That's what's happening when it comes to price over here. One of them's trying to push it up, the other's trying to push it down. We don't know who's going to win because, well, Matthew's engine was going to explode. But they ain't saying a whole lot about what's going to happen to Carrie's transmission and moving right along. So, so. Oh, so we don't really know what's going to happen to price, but we can we can say with that certainty more cookies, right? We want to buy more; they want to make more. And ain't nobody complaining about making cooking or cookies. So you would have the possibility of a supply increase and the demand decrease. This is a situation where the eggs get cheaper, but Eating cookies makes your lips fall off. So what would happen there? Supply is increasing. It's easier for them to make cookies, but we ain't as interested. So what happens? Well, one thing is making them want to make more cookies, but making us want to buy less cookies. So what happened? You've got that double movement here. We don't know what's going to happen to the number of cookies, but we do know making your lips falls off makes them want to lower the price. You okay? Okay. Uh, making your lips fall off makes them want to lower their price. Cheaper eggs makes them want to lower their price. So, either way, the price is going to go down a lot. That's going to be the outcome there. So, the third alternative is what happens if eggs get more expensive at the same time eating cookies makes you faster, better, stronger better spelling. What happens there? Same thing. 
Two things are trying to push the price up. The eggs are more expensive, so we got to raise the price of our cookies at the same time. These cookies do more for customers, so customers are willing to pay more, so we're going to raise our price. Price is going to go up a bunch. But for quantity, we don't know. And then the last combination is going to be if supply goes down at the same time, demand goes down. Eggs get more expensive at the same time. Eating cookies makes our lips fall off. What happens there? Big decrease in the number of cookies. Because we don't want to buy them and they don't want to make them. Well, it depends. Look, it's one of these is trying to push the price up, the other one is pushing down. The decrease in demand, well, we got to lower our price to keep from losing even more customers. But we want to raise our price because our eggs got more expensive. So, there again, there will be a supply and demand curve available for you to play with, or you can just memorize this chart, whatever makes you happy. And in this case, if they both move in the same direction, you get an increase. If they move in opposite directions, you end up with a decrease. And if it's demand is the one going up. Oh, no, that's. Oh, I, I didn't mark the right thing. Let me cut. Take two. Everybody ignore the last 30 seconds. Rewind. Let's see. If they're both moving in the same direction, here we go. Both moving in the same direction, it's quantity that changes. And if it demand is the one that's going up, you end up with an increase. Learn those two rules that can help you put that chart together. Okay. Talk to me about raising the minimum wage. Raising a minimum wage is one of those few things in life that actually hit both supply and demand at the same time. If you raise minimum wage, workers get more money. So what are they going to do? Spend it. So what happened? Demand increases. Um, workers got to get paid more money. Companies have to pay their workers more. So what does what happens for them? Supply is decreasing because they got to pay their workers more. They're not going to pay as many work. So you end up with a supply decrease and a demand increase at the same time. This is what you get with a minimum wage increase. No. Point. And we're going to get to this later this semester. So have a look. Get ready for flashback in a few weeks. Uh, the point of raising minimum wage is to improve the standards of life for people, create jobs. That's part of the argument. But what ends up happening if they increase minimum wage? One thing is making it to where people are going to buy more, but one thing is making it to where they're going to make less. So what really happens to the amount of stuff getting made and sold? It's about the same. So what happens to the amount of jobs? It's going to be about the same, right? Because if we're still making the same amount of stuff before, we're still working the same people that we were working before. So are we really creating jobs here? Not necessarily. What are we getting for the minimum wage increase? A price increase. Because if I have to the gas station and I got to start paying people, my workers, $10 an hour instead of $7 an hour, well, what am I going to be doing with the price of the Doritos on my shelf? Jacking the price up. What am I going to be doing for the price of M and M's? Jacking the price up. Got it. Because you got to pay, come up with the extra money to pay that employee somehow. So historically, when it comes to it, over the last hundred years since, you know, a couple of hundred years since we've had minimum wage, not quite like hundred years, job creation, there has really been no evidence that jobs have been created because of minimum wage increases. Some jobs are created in some areas, some jobs are lost in some areas. It depends. We talked about that last semester, we'll talk about it next semester. I said cashiers. The people that gain jobs. The people that get the minimum wage workers to get more money, who are they? Young people. And what do y'all spend money on? Video games and Cheetos. So what happens? Video game companies and Cheetos, Frito Lake, they're gonna be selling more, they're gonna be hiring more workers, right? 
But those businesses are selling less because their their workers are making less money, or we're going to be letting people go. The stuff that they were buying are going to go down. Some industries are going to gain. Some industries are going to lose. Overall, the amount of jobs it just doesn't change a whole lot when it comes to minimum wage. So just be prepared when the next election cycle comes around and they start trying to tell you all about that. Just take it with a grain of salt. Just say, yeah, okay, what else? What else are you going to do? Mr. Angle, Mrs. Politician. 